hey guys welcome back to Xamarin guys so in this tutorial we are going to talk about dynamic way of adding paths inside our Xamarin forms application so this is the seventh part and I request you to uh, go through my first to sixth part and the links are in my video description below you can just check out there so in this tutorial we are going to add directions API and uh, this is the API that needs our account to be registered inside the google developer console so that is our billing account so let's enable it then we'll get this graph and right clicking on that uh, the left hamburger menu we'll get our billing details then click on link of billing account if you don't have then go to the manage billing account then you can just create a new account after clicking on that create a new account then this console is going to be open and I'm right now deciding in Nepal it might be different in your case then you can just rename everything and then add your billing information over here after it's been accepted then only our API is ready that is let's go to the Google API's then inside our credential sections we have our api key ready that was used previously in our app correct so we'll just copy it the same id and then paste it inside this section google maps api key section so you have to enable your billing account and then add the credentials don't use mine because it's a just a test account in our previous tutorial what we did actually was we were using a list of latitudes and longitudes from our source to the destination that is we were manually providing a list of latitudes and longitudes and uh, giving the car the direction from that latitude and longitude to the final destination latitude and longitude so we are not going to do that as of now in this tutorial we are going to dynamically call all the latitudes and longitudes from google direction api by providing a source latitude and longitude to the destination latitude and longitude that is what we are going to actually achieve so let's create a new folder named as services and create a class name as api services as we are going to call our api service from our google maps so json serializer will inherit from newtonsub.json you can see over here we have a newtonsoft.json plugin installed so let's rename it to the api services then now let's call that http client from system.net.http then uh, we'll remove this base address as we'll be not using that base address as of now and we'll be replacing it later with a google map base address now this is the method that will be called in order to call the direction api so i'll keep those source code in my video description below and then you can just grab it out so this is the original latitude original longitude destination latitude and destination longitude that we have already discussed uh, previously so uh, this is the google direction uh, class that we need to add so let's create a model folder named as google direction so that we can send google directions all the latitudes and longitude to the respected calling classes that is our from our, to our view model so from our view model we will call this api services now this google direction is the class that we have just now created inside our models folder so we'll be sending this google direction now let's remove this http client as we don't want now let's call client dot get async this will call our directions api from our google map stk that is the direction api that we have just now enabled so this endpoint is going to get our source latitude and longitude to the destination latitude and longitude and it requires our key from our api constants so we'll be adding the key over here that is our api constants so you can just create some uh, the drop down to get the latitude and longitude and create another drop down to get the destination latitude and longitude so that will give you uh, access to the api endpoint when you are going to create some uh, real time application you can just get the places api enabled and then get the 
source latitude and longitude and the destination latitude and longitude you can just do anything as you like now this view model class is going to call api services that is our api services class and then get the service client instant and get the direction so this view model is going to interact with our api services and you, we know that a basic mbbm approach where a view interacts with the view model so i'm going to return it to null then we are going to load the route from our source latitude and longitude to the destination latitude and longitude now this is the track path whenever this button is clicked in our previous tutorial we used to track the path with the help of the json now in this tutorial we are not going to do that as we are going to get all the path directions from our google map sdk so uh, let me create a variable named as path content and then get the instance of map page view model from here and then get the method from our load route method that is defined inside our map page view model class so we need to make it a sync await in order to get that list of item i'm going to make that whole button click as a sync so that i can get all the contents out of that load route method so we are going to replace my json with path content that we have defined previously now let's go to load route declaration that is our view interacts with the view model our view model interacts with the api constants class then we are going to add a new uri of base address no this is not the way so a new uri of the base address that is our maps.googleapi.com slash maps so this is how we are going to tell our client that this is our base address and we are going to get the directions api out of that thing so i have added some breakpoint in order to check whether we are getting successful okay response or not so you can just see over here the endpoint that was used by me was a test endpoint and it will give me this type of response if you have enabled your billing account then you won't get that type of message as it will provide you a successful response plus the response that should come in order to get the direction path from the api so let's follow up with this tutorial now let's go to our google direction.cs that we have initialized it previously and which does not contain any contents so i'll give those code in my video's description you can just grab it out there this is basically the google uh, directions api response class that is uh, whenever we get the response from out of the api then we are going to deserialize with the help of this google direction api class now let me replace that load route method with this method that is our enumerable of poline helpers we can just decode the response that comes out of the google maps api so we can create a new poline helper class and then it helps to basically generate the latitudes and longitudes so this was the poline helper class that i take uh, reference from uh, the link uh, that I will be giving in my videos description below you can just check it out there so this is the poll and helper class which helps us to get the latitudes and longitude out of the response that is provided by our google maps sdk so that's all regarding this poll and helpers class dot cs so we'll get inherited from our models folder where we have defined our poll and helper class now let me put breakpoints over here and get the directions method and we are good to go with everything configured now now let's get the latitude and longitude out of the google maps so i have already told you previously like you can get a simple ui grabbing the latitudes and longitude out of the drop drop uh, drag and drop box and uh, get the final destination latitude and lo longitude from the uh, dropbox and you can even use the google place api to get the places nearby so you can get anything as you like but you need to add your billing method to the google map console here i'm actually getting the source latitude and longitude and the final destination where i want to be 
latitudes and longitude and google map sdk will provide me all the positions between those the source latitude and longitude to the final destination latitudes and longitude you can just check it out over here so let me go to the google maps this is the final long longitude i need to paste it to the final longitude so let me start the project and let's check it out whether it gives a successful output or not so the application is running then we'll get this ui and if i click on track path here i have used some breakpoint so that you can just check it out everything is working fine so this is the response that you would get whenever your billing account is accessed like accepted now we are good to, good to go I'm, I'm going to press f5 f5 will get all our positions between those latitude and longitudes automatically that is our dynamic way of generation the positions now I have, if i click on f5 we'll see our car moving towards the destinations so that's all for this tutorial now thank you guys thanks for watching keep in touch for next tutorials